Hi, I'm Joseph Ricca, Superintendent of Schools of the White Plains City School District, and I'm joined today by Dr. Ann Vicaro Teich, the Assistant Superintendent for Finance and Operations. Hi, Dr. Teich. Hi, Dr. Ricca. Good <laughs> afternoon. We, uh, we hoped that we would spend a few minutes uh, creating a short video, and we're going to keep it short, um, to provide you with some additional information about this year's proposed district budget. Uh, one of the most important things that I need to leave with you, our viewer and our community member, is that May 21st, Tuesday, May 21st, just a couple of short weeks, um, is probably one of the most important days in the school district because that's the day that we have the opportunity as community members to participate in the process uh, of voting um, uh, related to the budget and related to the Board of Education. Uh, we're focusing all of our intent and our resources on our kids and uh, I'm also happy to share with you right out of the, the gate uh, that this budget supports 100% of our present programming. There are no cuts to programming, there are no reductions to the services that our children receive and in fact we're going to be talking to you a little bit about some additions that we think are going to help to strengthen our program moving forward. Correct. Planning is important because there are a lot of things that we just uh, can't tell what's going to happen uh, each and every year. Certainly the economy is a big question, um, with whether or not state aid is going to increase, decrease, or remain flat. Uh, the tax cap, of course, federal regulations, unfunded mandates, the list goes on and on. Um, what we try to do is we try to create the most conservative budget that we can uh, that's going to continue to support our program moving forward regardless of the factors outside that we can't control. A lot of work goes into creating a budget, starting with the long range plan. plan. We presented our instructional budget, we presented our non instructional budget, then our preliminary budget. Um, finally, the Board of Education had a, a workshop and then ultimately approved the adopted proposed budget. This year's adopted proposed budget, in addition to supporting all of our children's programming, also remains within the tax cap. And that's really important. I mean, we recognize how important it is for us to craft and, and propose budgets that uh, are fiscally responsible and conservative and take into consideration the cost of living for, for our community members. You want to talk a little bit about our major sources of revenue, uh, Dr. Karatesh? Sure. The majority of our, our revenue comes from our real property taxes, um, which is within the tax cap at 84%. And then we also um, receive um, a good portion of our, our revenues from state aid. Even though we're not fully funded, it still came back as 11.1% increase versus a 0.45% increase, which was originally proposed by the governor uh, in January. So that was a huge benefit uh, to the district and, and will be a huge benefit to our students. This is interesting and, and important. Um, our major areas of expense, and this is something that should be a point of pride for everybody who lives in White Plains, is that the majority of our dollars, the, the vast majority of our dollars within the budget, are focused directly on instruction directly in the classroom and services related to our children. So well over 70% of the, the expenses are, are, are driven to our program driven. We talk a lot about enrollment and questions come up about enrollment related to the district's future and, and how, how our schools look right now. So, so we offer just a, again a snapshot based on to, uh, this year's BEDS data. data. Um, and you can see that, that right now we are pretty flat and, and are going to remain pretty flat as we move forward. Um, certainly different than, than some of our neighbors and other school districts and certainly throughout the, uh, the state where they're seeing precipitous declines in student enrollment. Um, we are seeing a, a pretty steady, even uh, uh, enrollment each year all the way out until 2028-2029. Uh, um, so that, that is something that, that is exciting for us because it remains uh, that White Plains is an attractive place for families. So the summary of the staffing changes or what we're recommending um, this year uh, within this budget really breaks down into program. We wanted to make sure that we were keeping in line with our, uh, with our long range plan and continuing to strengthen our programming based on the plans that we had laid out years ago. This year continues to do that. Um, we are going to bring the circle closed at, at Highlands with uh, a 1.2 full-time equivalent for uh, science, bringing Earth Science, Regents Earth Science for All. Um, we're also going to create that fifth team at Highlands, which will allow our children to remain with their team as they move through uh, the academic year and not have to cross team. And by doing that, or to do that, we're bringing um, an additional English language arts teacher, um, as well as a social studies teacher. Uh, we are recommending an additional social studies teacher at the high school to alleviate class size in our social studies programs. We heard that loud and clear from our moms and dads uh, that those classes were getting um, too, too. Too, too big and uh, this, this will alleviate that concern. 
Uh, we are looking to uh, bring one full-time math specialist to each of our uh, elementary schools. American Sign Language took off at the high school uh, this year. We're recommending increasing that uh, class by 0.2. AVID as well, 0.2. Dual language uh, mathematics at Highlands, um, also 0.2. And, and a music technology course at the high school, 0.6, full-time equivalent. And in doing that, what we'll also be able to do is be able to bring music to Rochambeau. Uh, so we're, we're very excited about that as well. That'll be a great benefit it will for be a great students, benefit. yeah. We're going to make some changes in special education and pupil services, always making sure um, that we're supporting our, our students with special needs um, in every form and facet possible, um, and making sure, quite frankly, that we're supporting all of our faculty and staff members um, in all of those areas. So there are going to be some changes that we're recommending, which uh, is, uh, includes the addition of an integrated co-teaching section at Ridgeway, um, two sections of integrated co-teaching at Mamaric Avenue, and that's going to be done through a reallocation of staff. Um, elementary guidance services for our for our elementary school students, and, and that will bring us uh, into compliance with regulation re requirements. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, as well as an integrated support program, an ISP program, we are going to recommend increasing uh, our security uh, throughout the district by bringing one uh, security guard each to uh, the five elementary schools, as well as one to uh, Rochambeau. We're going to uh, recommend increasing our maintenance uh, our maintenance uh, personnel uh, with a mechanic. And uh, also some other staffing changes include some stipends for clubs at the high school and at Highlands, an assistant field hockey coach, a, a soccer a modified boys soccer coach, an, advi an advisor for our New York State Seal of Biliteracy. And we have each year, it's so exciting, we have so many more students year after year right. achieving right. that seal of biliteracy. Another look here at, uh, at our expenditures. Um, the, these, uh, I think, do a really good job, Anne, of, of breaking down where the dollars go. And, and what the viewers will see is that 78.66% you know, of, of our expenditures are devoted to programming right. kids. Um, and that's exactly what we want to see. And we even reduced our administrative costs uh, a little bit um, this year uh, based on where we were last year. Folks ask all the time what happens uh, if a budget fails. I don't like to spend a lot of time on it um, because I really think that we've been blessed with, uh, with a great deal of support from the community. Certainly, um, we are very appreciative. But just so folks know, if a budget were to, to fail, the Board of Education would have the opportunity to uh, take another look at the budget and put it back out, either modified or, or the same uh, for, for a second vote. Uh, if the budget then failed for a second time, it would move into what's called a contingency, contingency. budget, and we would have to reduce $6.3 million of our adopted budget. Right. So there are going to be three uh, questions uh, that, that will be on this year's ballot on May 21st. The first is, is uh, the resolution related to the budget. We are going to have two questions related to capital reserve. The first proposition related to uh, capital reserve is going to be a request uh, to expend $6.4 million, which has already been um, set aside within this capital reserve. I think it's important to note that the expenditure of capital reserve has absolutely no impact on taxes. This is money that's already been set aside. Um, and in fact, will we'll help to us to save money because we're not going out to bond. So when you can make those savings each year, that's what it benefits, Absolutely. those long-term savings. So um, the question is, is related to the $6.4 million, and, and what we're asking is uh, to support work at Highlands, Courtyard, Windows, Lintels okay. associated with, with the windows and some repointing, <clears throat> uh, as well as lighting, and uh, re replacing the field at Parker Stadium, which has come to the end of its useful life. Yes. At the high school, um, we are asking uh, for support for a new security vestibule. Um, we're also upgrading um, the electrical system at the high school, which I think is from is original, 60s, yeah. right? Um, making repairs and improvements to the pool, uh, as well as the intercom uh, and public address system at the high school, and Laux Field, redoing the uh, field at Laux, which also has come to the end of its useful life. So the third or the third item or second proposition will, will relate to the creation of another capital reserve. Now, capital reserve. why do we have to create a new capital reserve? Because the first capital reserve, which the board was smart about doing back in 2016, the district has uh, reached what it was authorized to do. So it has you know, reached the maximum of $25 million that it could deposit into that. Okay. But if we want to continue to be able to put savings into a reserve to reduce future debt, 
we're recommending that we should create a, a new capital reserve. And this new capital reserve will be up to $25 million in 10 years. Over a 10 year period, you know, whichever comes first. There are going to be other upcoming budget sessions. We have, uh, we have a meeting on the 13th uh, with the Board of Education. Um, and then, of course, uh, the 21st, again, is, is uh, Election Day. And, and we have the opportunity from 12 p.m. to 9 p.m. here in White Plains to vote both uh, on the budget as well as uh, on uh, two incumbent Board of Education trustee members are, are also uh, running for re-election. And, you know, the, the budget newsletter should also be uh, arriving at, the, you know, everyone's mailbox uh, during that period of time. That's right. We'll have 13. all this information right. on as well. Right. Uh, questions is probably the, the most important thing. What we would always like to remind you and, and what is always the case here is if you have any questions about the budget or anything else, you can feel free to reach out to us at any time. Uh, you can also check out the district's website where all of our budget information, all of the documents, all the documents from all the planning process is available. Um, and we're happy to provide any additional information that you might need. Thanks again, uh, Dr. Tara Thank Teich. you, Dr. Rekha. Absolutely, and, and thank Absolutely. you all uh, very much uh, for your support, your continued support of our children uh, and uh, the City School District of White Plains. Mm -hmm.